In this video, we're going to talk about how the chloroplast is specifically adapted to perform its functions in photosynthesis. So what are the functions and adaptations? Well, the first thing is that the chloroplast has an outer membrane, an inner membrane, and then it has all of these thylakoids, right, which are stacked on top of each other to form what's called a granum. These grana are then connected to each other using what we call a lamella. Okay, so a lamella is kind of a connection between two thylakoids. And then surrounding this thylakoid space, we have what we call a stroma. Okay, so that's kind of like the cytoplasm of the chloroplast. How is the outer membrane adapted to its function? So what is the function of the outer membrane? Well, it just has a function of compartmentalizing the cell, right? So we said that eukaryotes have this ability to section off parts of the cell so that it can perform specific functions. Photosynthesis requires specific conditions, right? Like the, the enzymes need certain pHs and there's a couple of different things that, that they just need, certain conditions. And so the outer membrane is a way of kind of blocking off this, the, the, my, the chloroplast from the rest of the cell. You then have these grana, right, or one granum, which is a stack of thylakoids. Now, the reason why we have this granum is because the purpose of the thylakoids is to absorb light energy, right? So you can imagine that if you're trying to absorb light energy, let's imagine these are thylakoids stacked on top of each other, you want this light energy to strike as many photosystems as possible. So it's better to have the thylakoids stacked on top of each other because then one light, one light uh, ray or wave is going to pass through all of them and therefore excite more electrons in that one moment. The thylakoid membrane is adapted because it contains clusters of these photosystems, right, which is what we use in the light dependent reactions. Also those electron carriers that are also in the light dependent reactions and ATP synthase, of course, to generate the ATP that we need for the light independent reactions. We then have the thylakoid space, right? And just to kind of illustrate what that is, if we have, we said uh, that this is the, so this is a thylakoid and outside we have the stroma. And then what we're doing is we're pumping H plus into the thylakoid space Base when we're doing the light dependent reactions, right? We talked about that. And so when you're building up this, this proton gradient, it's ideal to have as small a thylakoid space as possible, right? It's a really narrow space because that quickly builds up the proton gradient. Now, this is similar to how the intermembrane space in mitochondria is also adapted for this function. Finally, we then have the stroma, right? And this contains all of the enzymes necessary for the Calvin cycle. Because in order to go from RUBP to, to glycerate 3-phosphate to triose phosphate and, and so on, you need certain enzymes. We don't really talk about the enzymes in the Calvin cycle, except for Rubisco, of course. But you do need enzymes to generate that process. And so the fact that the stroma has these enzymes is a specific adaptation.